Hello travelers, Boardman21 here, and today we're going to discuss some more of the uniques that are coming in patch 8.3. Now as you know, in a previous post by the devs, they said that 25 new uniques are coming in patch 8.3. And today we got a glimpse at 4 more of them, and these babies are powerful. So in the forum post it says, Last Epoch's next update is getting closer and closer, and it will bring a lot of new powerful, unique, and set items for you to hunt. Here's just a little taste of what you'll be able to find. And here they are. First, we've got a shield called the Bastion of Honor. It comes with 25% block chance and up to 800 block effectiveness as an implicit. And then the affixes, these are where it gets really powerful. It's got 11% less damage taken from nearby enemies, along with 100% block chance against nearby enemies. That means that if your enemies are nearby, which I assume, I think they've said is like 4 meters, I believe that's what's considered nearby, which is roughly, I believe, the circle of the training dummy. Uh, don't take my word for it, I just believe that's what it is, it might be a little closer. That means you will have a 100% block chance, which means that any character in the game now that's melee or even ranged can have a 100% chance block as long as you put on this shield, which is just absolutely crazy. It also gives you added melee physical damage, so it makes up a little bit for the fact you're not dual wielding. And then of course it gives you a ton of health and a ton of mana, both of which are really good in build enabling on a lot of different things. So it's going to be really cool. If you're playing a build like a minion build where your offhand really doesn't matter, there's like no good use, this is the perfect spot for it. Alright, then we have a two-handed staff called the Curse of Perseverance. What's cool about this is it looks like a really good leveling uh, two-handed staff that we have. It doesn't come with very much adaptive spell damage, but it does come to plus one all necrotic spells, gives you a lot of necrotic damage, and then gives a percentage chance for Hungering Souls to fire off six additional projectiles. It gives you a bunch of life, and then it also gives you a bit of leech. Not uber powerful, it is a low-level requirement, but this is probably a great one if you have it. If you're going to run an alt, you'll be able to level up really quickly with this. Then third, we've got Azuril's Fury. And with this, it gives you 25 or up to 26 health regen, which is a huge amount. The other thing, that comes on the belt slot, which means you can still get the flat health regen on the boots, on the helm, and on the gloves. Which means that there is a lot of room, or it might be relic is the third one, but I believe it's gloves. But it gives you a huge amount of flat health regen, which is really build enabling it. Maybe it'll even be able to rival that of Leech. I don't think so, but it might be a turning point if you have that unique. It also gives you a bunch of increased fire damage. And then here's the really interesting thing about it. Using a potion grants you false water. Fury. Until you run out of mana. So if you use a potion and you're above zero mana, you gain a buff that lasts until you hit zero mana. During false water fury, your mana does not regenerate. And it's drained at an accelerating rate, starting at zero, and then for every second that goes by, it degenerates by 10 mana per second. So after one second, you lose 10. After two seconds, you'll lose 20. After three seconds, you'll lose 30, and so on. And then also, here's the really cool part. During False Water Fury, non-channeled melee attacks consume 20 mana to deal plus 100 melee fire damage, which is a huge amount. Now what's cool about this is that means that you're going to be able to spend all of your mana really, really quick, especially if you have really fast attack speed. But if you have something like Cinder Strike or a Fire Skill on the Sentinel, or if you're using a Firebrand or a Flame Wreath on the Spellblade, it's going to allow you to deal insane damage. You're going to get some really big hits. And then of course the question will be how do you get that mana back? Well once the buff wears off and it's no longer working like that, Cinder Strike can generate a lot of mana per hit thanks to its passive. You can also get oil coating. In the Sentinel you could use Volatile Reversal or use the passives to use a zero costing skill to generate a bunch of mana. And then for Spellblade of course you have either Focus or Mana Strike which can give you a lot of mana. So lots of ways to get it right back. And of course you'll have to stack lots of potions as well. Side effect, you can only wear three potions on this belt, so it is a slight debuff that you can't have like four, um, but it should still really be a good belt, definitely going to be playing around, definitely a build enabler, definitely should make some fire skills start hitting really, really hard. And then fourth, the Latria's Storm Crown, which I believe is the second set piece to the two-handed staff that we're getting that converts Meteor to Lightning, I believe this is the other piece of that, it, it 
fits all the requirements for it. But it gives you plus one to lightning spells, which means that if you're wearing the two-handed staff, you're going to have a lightning meteor. So it'll give you plus one to that. It'll also give you lightning penetration. It gives you intelligence, and then you get 1% shock chance per point of intelligence. And then, of course, if you wear the two-piece set, you get plus one spell lightning damage per point of intelligence. So if you can stack up, you know, say 80 points of intelligence you'll be able to do a lot of spell lightning damage especially with meteor and you're going to have shock chance with that if you're running it with another lightning skill say lightning blast or lightning nova something that can apply a lot of shock you're going to have a lot of hard hitting lightning skills wearing that set and that's the four new teasers they've also teased this a few before but there's still about 15 to 18 of them that we don't know what they're going to be but i'm sure with the new updates they're going to be very powerful and i'm very excited to see what the rest of them are which one of these are your favorite let me know in the comments below and as always stay safe travelers and until next time have a good one